The other day, you see, Nobby and I, my friend Nobby, Nobby Nibbler, not his real name, uh, were discussing the situation vis-a-vis -a, -vis, uh, a religion in our local uh, environs, you see. Now, due to the uh, cutbacks in the Church of England, our vicar is in charge of four parishes, you see. And what this means is that every Sunday morning, he starts off with one church over the hill, you know, and then he gets on his bicycle and cycles round four churches and does four services, you see. Now, we're the last ones on his round, you see. So, you know, I mean, the poor fella, uh, the Reverend Mingus Cucumber, you know, he's nearly 64. By the time he gets to us, he's on the verge of a heart attack and pisses a fart. You see, so Nobby and I decided that we would, uh, you know, initiate our own reformation, you know, on a local level. One of the first problems that Nobby and I considered was the communion, you see when you go up to receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, you see. Which, in reality, is like a horrible wafery thing that's very dry, and a slug of sherry with a load of water in it, you know. Or not, depending on how, you know, the Reverend Cucumber is feeling, you see. Anyway, the problem we have is that many of our servers, actually all our servers, are in their 90s, you see. And uh, they don't have the steadiest of hands. Now this is all right if you're receiving the bread because they put it in your palms, you see. And that's okay, you know, because they've got a kind of wide area to hit and they usually get it vaguely in your hands, you see. Anyway, now the cup is a different matter, you see, because it's, it's a goblet made out of brass and they hold up to your face and you take it and you drink from it, you see, as they hold on to it to make sure you can't run off with it, you see. Now, the danger with that is they're shaking so much that you might end up losing all your front teeth. You know. Anyway, we came up with a very, very good plan, you see, to uh, get round this, you see. So one Sunday, Nobby and I went there equipped with a straw which we thought was a good way of protecting our teeth. The secondary gain from this was that we could also take a bigger slug of the sherry, you see. Which we thought was a bit of a bonus, really. Anyway, by the next week, you see, the Reverend Cucumber had put up a notice saying no straws allowed during communion. which I thought was aimed at me and, you know, a nibbler. Anyway, I asked one of the uh, ladies in the WI, you see, if this was the case. And she said, well, actually, behind your back, the Reverend Cucumber calls you a beardy old rascal. And I said, no, 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 no. Be the old rascal is that rugby player who used to play for Ireland and the British Lions, you see. You know. And now he's doing, uh, he's a, like a journalist -y, pundit geezer. You know, like Jody Wilkinson. That's be the old rascal. Anyway, so I thought, right, no straws, okay. So I got one of those dropper things that you use, you know, you used to use in chemistry. Uh, when you were at secondary school, you see. I got one of those and a glass. So I gave myself, you know, three or four slugs of this dropper thing into a glass, which again was a, you know, fair amount. Got a bit squiffy, you know. And the next, the next week he put up another poster saying, uh, no tea pipettes allowed during communion, you see. So I took a syringe. That bloody sorted him out. One of the first ideas that Nobby and I had was to uh, 
liven up the prayers, you see. And we thought we'd do this with some salad, you see. Because the Reverend Cucumber, you see, always says, let us pray. And we thought, well, we, we'd bring in some lettuces, you see, so that the congregation could hold them up to the Lord, a sort of evangelical salad uh, gesture, you know, and, and feel more involved uh, with the prayers, you see. Anyway, so on Saturday afternoon, Nobby and I went to the grocers, you see, to get some lettuces. Anyway, so we bought all that he had, and we reckoned he didn't have enough, you see. Now, the problem with this was that we had to buy something else, because we had to make everybody feel involved, you see. Anyway, as the reverends called cucumber, you see, we bought some cucumbers. But there wasn't enough of those. So we got some radishes, but there were only a couple of them, and a couple of beetroots. And so we had to make do with tomatoes to kind of bulk it out. And it would have been okay, except that one of the person who got the tomatoes thought they were for throwing. Before I began attending the Church of England, in our local parish, you see, I used to nip into the outskirts of town, you see, when I was young and single, you know, to sit at the back of the Methodist Church and examine the old testicles. I remember Barbara saying, don't you mean testaments? I said, I know what I mean, thank you. Anyway. But it was a good show, you know, there were like slides and things and different kind of bands and very, very interesting lay preachers who did all sorts of things with Tetris bricks and God knows what. But it was interesting, you know, it was nice. But when I married Barbara, you see, I decided that well, I would go with her to the church of England. But the problem with Mingus, you see, the Reverend Cucumber, is that he doesn't quite realise that the church is in the entertainment business, you see. You've got to put on a show. You know, you've got to make the audience feel at home. So I decided to show him how much at home I could feel by taking a lazy boy, you see, to the communion and having it delivered just before the service. So at the back of the, you know, aisle near the font, I was in my lazy boy, you see, and I cunningly had a baseball hat on with two beer cans and straws that came down into my mouth, you see, just in case I needed a little refreshment. And in one arm of the lazy boy, I had a big coffee, you know. And in the other one, I had a big bag of sweets, you see. Just to let him know that I was feeling at home during his service and his dull sermon that goes on 15 minutes and makes your toes curl. Anyway. Next week, there was a sign-up saying, no lazy boys allowed in church. We were, by this stage, we were getting a bit, you know, downhearted. And we thought, well, maybe we should go and check out what the other churches are doing that we're not doing, you see. So, you know, one Wednesday evening, we took ourselves into the cathedral in town, you see, to see what was going on there, you know. We were called, dropped in Coral Evensong, which we thought was marvellous, you know, because it's a beautiful building. And they had a, a choir, you see. And they were... There were little boys in frocks and uh, big men in frocks doing singing, you see. It's wonderful, absolutely brilliant singing, really. So we were very impressed, you know. So we went back to our little parish church and thought, how can we incorporate this into our Sunday services, you see? Anyway, Nobby was reading the Latin bit, you know. He said, uh, what does this mean? And he pointed out to a bit of the uh, uh, Angus Day, you know. Who's that bloke in ACDC? who plays the guitar. I said, oh, it's the obvious Angus Day, you idiot. And he showed it to me and he said, I've just got him written down here, excuse me. Pacata Monday, miserere, nobbies, you see. And he said, what does that mean? And I said, it means rid the world of miserable nobbies. And that means you. And he said, well, I'm not miserable. I said, you bloody are. 
And he said, I'd also, I don't know any other nobbies. I said, well, is that, you know, that, that, that footballer chappy, you know, who won the World Cup with no teeth? You know, your son played for Leeds United, you know. And he was part of the, you know, the, the, the Manchester Ufarty team, you know, in the 1960s, who were managed by Sir Busby. You know, Sir, Sir Busby Berkeley. You know, they were very well choreographed. And he said, uh, well, I'm not going to promote, a, you know, a, an even song a tradition in our local church if it involves getting rid of me. And I said, well, I, I thought it was quite a good idea, actually. <sighs> it seemed that our Reformation was somewhat stalling. Or perhaps hadn't got underway at all, you see. Anyway, so Nobby was a bit down with this, you know. So I thought I'd regale him with the story of Martin Luther, you see, who was very, very important in the, uh, the, the original Reformation, you know, in the 16th century. And I explained to Nibbler, you see, that Martin Luther, to get things going a bit, you know, he nailed his theses to the door of the church in... Um, Wittgenstein. And after he did that, everybody noticed this, you see, got very, very excited, you see. And I could see I planted a seed in Nobby's head, you know. So anyway, so I left him to it. Anyway, I should have realised, you see, that he has two problems. One is that he doesn't listen. And the second thing is, he doesn't know what theses are anyway, you see. So unfortunately, he got the wrong end of the stick somewhat. To his credit, he did wear plastic gloves while he was doing it. But obviously the integrity of the thing wouldn't stand up to a bit of nailing, and it broke into all sorts of little pieces that went everywhere, you see. And the congregation were most unhappy. Anyway, as a result of this, Nobby and I had been banished. So next Sunday, we're going back to the Methodists to have a look at the old testicles. <laughs>